I'm with Dr. Longnecker today at Heber Valley Clinic, and we're going to talk about IUDs. First of all, um, there's a few different types of IUDs. Explain the different types. So there's two broad categories of IUD. One of them is a copper-coated IUD, and the other one is coated with a small amount of hormone. And both devices are great at preventing unwanted pregnancy. And how do they prevent pregnancy? So IUDs work in different ways. Um, they basically work by, number one, thinning the endometrial lining, which is the lining on the inside of the uterus, and they keep that very thin. They also create a hostile environment for sperm. And so whenever the sperm are trying to come through that area to interact with the egg, it's not a, not a very pleasant situation for them, let's say. <laughs> and so by preventing that interaction, we prevent fertilization. They create a thicker cervical mucus as well. So do women notice a change in discharge when they use IUDs? They may, they may. Um, a lot of the time women have changes throughout their cycle in their discharge. Some people notice that, some people don't. And so it's a little bit more individual whether or not you'll notice the change with the IUD, but typically it's a, a thicker cervical mucus. So you don't stop ovulating, that's not one of the ways it works, and so you still will feel cyclical changes in your body. Exactly, and you still- You have mood swings, bloating. You, you still may cramping. have some of those symptoms, and if you're, you've already been having that mid-cycle pain and crampy sensation with ovulation, you will probably continue to have that. What about bleeding changes with the IUD? What's normal to see? As soon as the IUD is placed, we anticipate seeing some spotting, some abnormal bleeding patterns over the first few cycles. Um, it's not uncommon for somebody to get the IUD placed and have a week or even two weeks of spotting. So you could have some prolonged bleeding right in the beginning, and exactly. that's normal. However, the great part about the IUD that has the hormone on it is that over time, it gets better and better and better. In fact, as the longer you use the device, the more likely you are that you'll eventually have amenorrhea or no periods at all. And that's a very good side effect that most women would like to have. Many women like yeah. it. Yes. So what about copper IUDs? What bleeding changes can you expect with those? Usually when the copper IUD is placed, I would anticipate, and I tell my patients this all the time, to expect that same pattern of bleeding over the first few weeks. However, once your normal cycle is kind of resume and you're just having cycles on a regular basis, those are the copper IUD is associated with an increase in bleeding during the, the period. So important to know as you consider it. And um, the copper IUD lasts longer than the other forms of, of the, the hormone IUDs, correct? Correct. So the copper IUD we, we place on the inside of the uterus and it provides um, protection from unwanted pregnancy for 10 years. There That's are some studies time. that say it could even go out to 20 years, wow. but we only recommend leaving it in for 10 years and then having it removed by your provider. And how long do ones like Mirena and Skyla, the hormone ones, last? The, the ones that are coated with the hormone, um, there's one that's good for five years and that's called Mirena. And they just came out with another one called Kylina that's a little bit smaller, a little bit less hormone, but also approved for five years. The Skyla device, again, that's a little bit smaller than the Mirena and a little bit less hormone, but that's only good for three years. And you don't have to leave it in for three years, five years, or 10 years, correct? Right. You can get it taken out whenever you'd like. Right, if you're ever having any problems and not tolerating it, or you decide that you wanna have a baby, then you just call your provider, and it's usually a very simple procedure to, to remove the device. So don't remove it yourself. We wanna highlight that, right? There can, be, there can be some complications with, re with placement and removal, both of which might be risks associated with IUDs, correct? Correct. Um, whenever we place the device, there is a risk that your provider should talk to you beforehand about uh, perforation of the uterus. It's a very rare complication, but it is a possibility. And that's when the one of the tools they're using or the device itself goes beyond the uterus and doesn't get into the right place. Um, there's also a small risk of infection at the time, but your provider should do a, a good job cleaning off the cervix before placing it. So as soon as you get it removed, what type of bleeding changes can you expect and how soon after are you able to get pregnant? So as far as return to fertility goes, I have seen patients get pregnant as soon as we remove the device with their very next cycle. They may not have even had a, a period in between there. They just simply ovulated and became pregnant. And that's with both, both types of IUDs, the, the hormone covered one and the, the copper IUD. However, typically it takes a lot longer than that. 
In fact, with the hormone-covered device, the return to fertility, I would counsel my patients to not expect to get pregnant for a number of months. However, within the first year, about 75 to 80 percent of them do successfully conceive. And of those who don't, there's probably another underlying cause. It's not the fact that they there use could IUD. Be. Yeah, the baseline infertility rate is probably about 10 to 15 percent. And so a lot of those people have other problems that weren't related to the IUD. So um, does it usually take a couple of months to start having regular periods again? And then once you start having regular periods, then you can assume that you're ovulating about mid-cycle? Typically it does. However, that's not the case for everybody, and it does affect everybody a little bit differently. But if you don't have a period for one to two months, it's probably not anything to worry about. It will come soon. Should you take a home pregnancy test just to find out if you were one of the ones who got pregnant right after? I, I would say yes. If you're having unprotected intercourse and you go more than the anticipated amount between your periods, a greater long, a longer time in between there, you would want to take a pregnancy test. You can either rule out or confirm that is the cause. Exactly. And it's a great idea if you're trying to become pregnant to just be proactive and know if you're pregnant or not. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Get in and get prenatal care when you should. So what if you get pregnant while you have the IUD in place. How common is that? How effective are IUDs and what are the risks if you do conceive with it in place? So IUDs are very effective. They're greater than 99% effective at preventing unwanted pregnancy. However, every once in a while we still do see somebody come in who has an IUD in place who is pregnant. Some doctors recommend, depending on how far along you are in your pregnancy, to remove the device. Others will leave it in. And so it's important that you talk to your health care provider. Don't just try to pull it Do out yourself or anything like that. Do not just pull it out yourself yeah. at home. They need to know how far along you are before they make any decisions regarding whether or not to remove it. And so that will require an ultrasound to measure baby and see exactly how big baby is and how old baby is before they do that. Can you use the IUD after you've had a baby to prevent pregnancy? Absolutely. Like if you're breastfeeding? Mm -hmm. The IUD is safe to use during the breastfeeding period. Both types of IUDs are. The copper IUD can be placed right away, but I usually recommend not placing it until about four to six weeks after you've delivered, um, just to allow the uterus to get back down to its normal size. When you place it in before that, there is the risk that your uterus could kind of push that out and expel that IUD, and that's just an, an added cost. Really, you shouldn't be having intercourse over that first four to six week interval anyway. So and you're I, going to see the doctor likely at about six right. weeks postpartum, so that's a good time to talk about I think about that's a great time to, to initiate that if, if that's the form of contraception that you're desiring. The hormone-covered intrauterine device is also safe to use during breastfeeding and can be safely used throughout the whole time that you do breastfeed. Uh, there was some concern that some of those components may decrease the amount of milk production and things like that, but studies haven't really shown that it has too much of an effect on that. So uh, a good rule of thumb is to talk with your doctor if you're thinking about using a certain type of contraception or wanting to change to another and they can ask you more specific questions and give you tailored advice about what would be best for you. Exactly, and it should be tailored to you. I think that's key. Well, thank you so much. That information is so helpful. And if you guys have questions in the future for me, feel free to ask them on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash intermountain moms and recommend us to your friends and family too.